Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, excited for the guys uh, last Saturday to come out and play really well and earn the opportunity to uh, represent uh, this program in the uh, Big 12 championship. A lot of distractions last week, a lot of potential distractions, whether it would be uh, senior day, last game at home, to uh, the weather, to um, playing your rival, all those things. and. Uh, I thought our guys did a really good job of blocking out uh, as much of the outside noise as they could and focus on just playing uh, a really good game against a much improved, really good Kansas team. And uh, I thought our, there was some ups and downs, but for the most part, uh, I thought our kids handled uh, everything really well. And, and we found a way to uh, get a pretty good win um, in front of a great crowd. That was a phenomenal crowd. I thought it was the, we've had great crowds all year. And that one would be hard to top, as loud as they were from the opening kickoff to the very end, to seeing our, our players go and engage with the fans afterwards. Uh, I thought it was a, a great crowd and can't thank them enough. Coach, with your history in the FCS level, and I think it might have happened once in K-State's history, playing the same team yep. twice in the season, how does that change your preparation for that team? Um, you know, we've done that an awful lot. and. You still look at the most recent body of work. You know, for us, it was six games, then played them, and we had a plan for those six games. And then you got to look at the next six games. You got to see what worked, did what didn't work. You don't want to reinvent the wheel in any in any respect because there's a reason why we're here. There's a reason why they are here. Yeah, you've got to make uh, some adjustments to to the plan and offense, defense, and teams. It's going to still come down to a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups, but um, um, try not to make too much of it. Other than you, you and and our players, their players know who they're going against. Um, but schematically, you still have to do what your kids know. How far has your offense come or evolved since that second half at TCU, where it was such a struggle for Will and the offense? Yeah, a um, couple things. We didn't see the ball very much because we couldn't get it back from them. Um, but uh, I, I just think they're so much more comfortable um, being that Will's played a, a handful of games now and taken you know, the majority of the reps with the ones for the last uh, uh, three plus weeks. Um, I think he's confident. I think the, the players are confident in him. And um, you know, I, I'm excited to, to see you know, as this week unfolds uh, some of the well, things that uh, we come up with, some of the wrinkles maybe off of a specific look to what we do really well and still comes down to getting the ball into our playmakers' hands. Teams often take the, the character of their quarterback mm -hmm. throughout the team. What, does TCU reflect Max Duggan's toughness and tenacity? Yeah, and uh, you talk about a team that has – overcome a, an awful lot of adversity as well. They've had a number of games where it came down to the last possession or two, and they found a way, whether it was on offense or on defense. You know, the, the defensive effort they put out against Texas was, was phenomenal to the last drive against Baylor, where they have to uh, have a hurry-up field goal to win it. Um, yeah, y y you can tell he's um, the leader of the football team. I'm sure they got a bunch, but uh, – uh, I'm just really impressed with him because he's such a competitor. You're getting kind of thin at safety. I think we saw Max Marsh play a little yep. bit even last Saturday. Some of that, too, I think you were trying to pace Steiger's uh, eligibility to yep. keep his Richard. Is, did that play into it? Yep, a little bit of everything. Uh, that's all I can say is a little bit of everything. Um, Max has taken a lot more reps. Max Marsh probably taking a lot more uh, reps than Kendra over the over the long body of work. Um, because Kendra wasn't here for spring ball, missed a good chunk of the summer, uh, was here for fall camp, played a couple of different positions. We were still learning about him, uh, trying to hold his shirt if we could. And um, that was a unique game plan last week. Uh, KU does an awful lot of stuff with uh, some motions and things that maybe Max and, and Mash had seen a lot more than Kendra. Uh, everybody's on the table to play this week. They have to be. Uh, we'll mix and match as best we can back there. Uh, again, um, a positive thing is we didn't lose anybody from the game against KU, so everybody should be available. I think this was kind of the timetable maybe you were expecting to maybe get Adrian back. Yeah. What's his status? Um, 
you know, Will's going to be the guy, and uh, Adrian has helped us get to this moment without question because of his body of work that he's done in the first half of the season. Um, yeah, there's an outside chance that uh, he could he could be available this week. We'll learn probably more Wednesday and Thursday. And if he is, um, like I said, Will will be the guy, but we've got to have a package or something for Adrian just because of the, the unique skill set that he does have. I know we'll – can't talk about the Pacifics and for another few weeks, but just how much of a recruiting jolt in general have you received from this late surge down the stretch? Uh, we'll find out, I think, in another in another couple of weeks. Um, but there's there's so many things going on in the landscape of of, of college football that uh, you don't realize the jolt you're going to see in the next uh, uh, three weeks. Coach, I want to ask you about Will. He he talked about after the game on Saturday. He talked to the guys after the TCU game and said, we feel like we're going to see these guys again. Have you kind of felt that attitude permeate throughout the locker room? Um, no. You know, that's more of a player deal, I'm guessing. Um, we, we lost that game, and we had to find ways to uh, to continue to get better and try to win each week because we had a tough s schedule still ahead of us. And I, I know as coaches we never – had that cross our minds. We were trying to get ready for each upcoming opponent. And and once again, if you if you try to look ahead, you're going to get knocked off and beat. And so um, never came across my mind. I'm sure the guys talk. They talk about a lot of things. Um, and it never really entered my mind, honestly, until after the West Virginia game, where it was okay. We know if if we win who the opponent's going to be. We, even though TC had probably uh, secured their spot long ago, we never even thought about that stuff. So then at least we could start some advanced scouting on them. And then when you think about that game against TCU, you guys obviously had a lot of injuries. Kind of taking time to reflect on it, did that maybe help your depth in the long run? It could have. Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that, uh, as you watch the tape, that played especially on defense that um, uh, either are not playing – right now or helping us on special teams. Um, you know, I, I, you forget we played three quarterbacks that game. I mean, I, I when I was going back and looking at it, I forgot that, that uh, uh, Rubes even got in there. Um, but, no, that was uh, a physical game. We lost some some bodies, but uh, they, they came back and beat us. I mean, that, that we can say all we want about we didn't do this or didn't do that. Give TCU credit. They came back from being down. Um, and stayed the course and stayed in the fight and found a way to get ahead and, and win the ball game. Um, and we have to find ways to to finish plays, finish drives, uh, get off the field on defense. That's the biggest thing that I think that uh, disappointed us is we couldn't get off the field on defense. Thus, our offense just never had the ball much in that second half. In what ways would you say TCU is maybe different now than they were when you guys first played the ball? I, I, they're better. I, I mean, I, I hope we're better. Um, for, for going through the the games that we have, you know, after you know, whether we even though we suffered one loss after that, we had some really good road wins that uh, are in tough places to win, uh, and so I think our guys gained some confidence there. But I, I know they're better. Um, you know, they've had tough games. It's not like you know you take this last week where they got after Iowa State. Exception of that, they had hard-fought wins and when you have those games it makes you better because you, you got to find ways when maybe it's not going right all the time uh, whether it was them playing Texas Tech to playing Baylor to playing uh, Texas I mean it's coming down West Virginia all those were, were battles and same with us and just finding a way to win it makes you better makes you makes your guys feel more confident when the game gets in the fourth quarter that you have a chance to win. Chris have you been able to put a finger on why the defense has been better in the second half in the last two games than the first half? A couple things. One, um, scripting of offensive plays I think is really good uh, by everybody in the league um, and seeing what you're going to get, seeing the pictures of how we're, gonna, how we're going to attack somebody. Uh, and that, uh, that as well as especially late in the season, it's hard to replicate speed in practice. You know, it's hard to replicate the same pictures, even though, okay, this is where it's going to be and this is the play you're going to see. But you know, even our even our scout team guys are, are, are kind of beat up and tired, um, as well as our, our older guys that are playing. And so you just don't get that. It takes a while probably to um, 
understand the speed of the game and get used to the speed of the game. And uh, this week was no different. And we've had a few of those where it takes us a while to get a handle on the speed of the game. Their running back gave you some fits in the first game. Why? What makes him so good? Yeah, he's he's a physical, hard runner that doesn't come down with arm tackles. We did not wrap up very well. We got to get more bodies to the football. We've we've got to use cup principles and know where you can miss so that we keep him within that cup. He's a terrific running back. I, I was so impressed with him. You know, we had some plays we were watching today, and it's like, okay, great, it's second and eight. Nope, it's second and four because he made a guy miss or ran through an arm tackle or dragged a guy for another three yards. I, I think he's one of the best backs in the league without question. I also want to ask one more about Ty. Um, what strikes me as uh, unique about him is that every time you've added something to his plate, he seems to get better, not yeah. only at you know kicking, he seems to be better at field goals, field seems to be better at punting. Why do you think? He keeps getting better the more I, he put on his plate. Partly because he wants that pressure. He wants that um, extra responsibility. And, you know, he's such a competitor. He's such a competitor. He competes in the winter conditioning, the summer conditioning, against all the all the other guys as well as anybody because he's a really good athlete. He um, you Just watch him on kickoff, man. He, he's in the mix. He's, he's hoping it pops so he can make a tackle because he just likes doing that stuff. Um, and I just think... Um, he's an extreme competitor for starters, as well as he's kicking the ball with so much confidence. We've talked about DJ Giddens a decent amount and his, and his impact. I understand he he doesn't say too much. He just kind of goes to work. Do you feel like you know him pretty well, or what can you tell us if, if Wildcat fans want to know more about who DJ Giddens is? A, a physical runner that is really, um, you know, he is quiet, but he's so smart. He picks things up very well. He's learned from Deuce. Uh, he's, uh, he's got really good vision. And he's another guy that it's hard to bring him down with an arm tackle. And you saw late in that game last week where he'd maybe get hit for a two or three yard gain and he was dragging people to get six or seven. Those are huge impactful plays to get us in a second and short rather than a second and long. Um, and uh, yeah, he's a great teammate. Um, he works his tail off, doesn't say much, and uh, I think he's a real humble guy, but he's excited about the opportunities that he's getting, and he's making the most of those for sure. Does it strike you as like a full circle moment at all that you're back in AT&T Stadium where you were for media days, <laughs> kind of talking about the big hopes for the season yeah. months ago, and now you're back in the same place? Yeah, uh, haven't really thought about that. You're right. Uh, the fact that we were down there, um, I think we collectively as a team have leaned on our experience of being there to start 2021 more so than leaning on the uh, the media day. Um, I think it's, you know, our kids, a lot of them have been in that environment. They, they know – you know what the stadium's like now. They they know what the noise factor is going to be. Um, they know the sidelines. They know the locker room, the, the layout. They know how we're going to bus into it. I think those things um, are things that will we won't be in awe of. And part of the reason why in 2021 we did a walk through there on Friday before we played Stanford because I didn't want guys to come in and just look around. Now we have a handful of guys that have not been there, but. The majority of our guys were either playing or on the trip, and I think that really um, gives them some comfort. Is there something you feel like you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe underrated or something that surprised you about TCU the first time around that, that you feel like you'll be more prepared for the second? You know, there's nothing really. I, I know how good a football team they are. Uh, they have uh, their – Offensively, defensively, special teams, collectively, they're the fastest team we've played. You know, they're the fastest team we've played uh, all three phases, uh, whether it's a return guy uh, that, you know, has had a bunch of big plays to the wide receivers, to the running back, to the defensive guys uh, that are playing really fast. Um, they're playing with confidence. Um, but just I think their overall team speed's really good. You talked about ways that you felt like TCU has improved since then. What are, what are some ways offensively, defensively, special teams that you feel like you guys have improved? Since uh, TCU? Special teams were were much improved uh, from a coverage standpoint, and uh, Ty's big a big part of that in how he's kicking the football, as well as a lot of those guys that were playing early on. Um, 
maybe are six, seven games into running down on kickoff and, and running on punt that they feel more comfortable. Um, Malik and Phil um, can make some things happen in the return game. Uh, I know on, on offense, you know, Ben Sennett has really helped that uh, uh, production on offense. Uh, all three wide receivers, uh, I think, are all, are all productive. DJ, um, as everybody knows, with Deuce and uh, Will feeling comfortable getting the ball around. Um, you know, we didn't have Daniel Green um, in the second half in probably some of the third quarter in that game. Um, Khalid didn't get to finish the game. Um, you know, now we had Kobe Savage and, and Sincere Mason that we don't have, and so that, there's a wash there. Uh, but it's going to come down to can we win some of these one-on-one -on -one matchups because we didn't win enough one-on-one -on -one matchups um, last uh, whatever last October, especially in the second half. How would you judge the twelve game efficiency of the offensive line? Really good. Um, this is a really good league with most teams, and we're one of them, are really strong on the defensive front. So you're 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 not going against. Uh, guys that are a team that's really good in the secondary or really good at linebacker and not very good up front. Everybody in our league has difference makers on the defensive line that are really can wreck a game, and uh, TCU is no different. And just the way those guys have battled every week, uh, been so impressed. Uh, we've been able to have some success either running or throwing uh, in all of our games, some, some success more on one side or the other. Uh, whether it's running or passing, but uh, uh, when you can have those five guys that have played so much together uh, this year, there's there's great chemistry, uh, there's great communication, and even the last week getting line gang and, and even Carver in there a little bit has helped. How would you judge the uh, efficiency of VJ Payne's play? He did a nice job. He, he I think he'll even be better this week having played last week. Uh, he made a number of tackles. I think he'll see things a little bit faster and a little bit cleaner this week. I think he'll be, I know he'll be more comfortable. You know, same thing. You talk about the anxiety of senior day um, for our guys last week. How about the anxiety of VJ to not lose for those seniors and to make sure he plays his, to his best of his ability so those seniors can have the opportunity to win their last home game as well as the fact that it's KU and it's to get to the Big 12 championship. There was a lot of, there was a lot of, uh, of, of anxiety on a lot of people, and, and uh, I thought he handled it exceptionally well. You haven't played a lot of uh, 11 a.m. games, especially recently a lot of night games. Does that change at all how you... How you prepare or during yeah, the week? Yeah, it, it does, Arnie. Uh, I, I wish we played a few more 11 o'clock games. I wouldn't look so tired up here uh, all the time because we've played so many so many night games. You guys are all fresh, I know, from, from those night games. Uh, but we've adjusted some things this week uh, through uh, some of our treatment times and lifting times to make sure, A, that we get enough rest uh, early in the week and then uh, later in the week, um, you know, uh, on Friday in particular, we're going to have to get up pretty early anyway to get get the, get the day rolling. Um, we've talked at length about hydration, about sleep, about uh, recovery, and using all the the, the tools that uh, our athletic training, nutrition, strength, and conditioning staff have because it's an early game. It's now what seven games in a row, and uh, we've the last three weeks. It's been cool to say the least. Some would even say cold at times, and some would say wet at times. And so us going to the indoor this week, um, and we all walked in there and thought it was 100 degrees in there. And it, I think it was 73 or 74 degrees, but it felt like it was 100 in there yesterday because for the last three and a half, four weeks, <laughs> we've been outside and it's been cold at 5 o'clock at night. That's why nobody. That's why I don't see you out there at five o'clock. <laughs> hey, let's uh, let's stay on that thought process for a moment. How important is it to be able to have a team that can adjust throughout, given that schedules can be so out of whack with TV and and the changes that come during a year? Yeah, we try to prepare them for it early in the week to talk about. Here's it is. It's a night game. <clears throat> Here it is. It's supposed to be wet. It's supposed to be cold. Um, you know all that all that stuff uh, to getting your body clock going earlier if it's an early game. Uh, we we 
go through those things over and over again. And most of these guys have played at all times now. They've played at 11 in the morning to, to 1 to 2.30 to 6 and 7. So the routine is the routine, and uh, our, our guys have done a really good job of handling the, the differences. Obvious talk, you know, TCU and the CFP. What would you like the nation to know about this team? Well, that uh, we get an opportunity to play one of the best teams in the country, uh, and uh, the fact that uh, we earned the opportunity to to get to this point. Um, I thought we lost to two good teams in in, the, in conference play in TCU and in, in Texas. Um, I thought we we won seven really tough football games, four of them on the road, uh, in tough environments, um, and. Uh, uh, played really well uh, on the road to give ourselves a chance uh, to be in this position and then um, held serve at home as, as best we could. It's, it doesn't matter where you play, home or away, but uh, it's hard to win in this league. And, and uh, our kids prepared every week um, and never looked ahead and never looked behind them. And that's the thing that you know we would lose a game in league play and come back with one of our best performances of the year. Uh, and then when we were able to, you know, talk about the edge we have to have, not only coming off a loss but coming off a win, uh, our guys really took to that, especially when we had to go back-to-back -back late in the season at Baylor at West Virginia, and we played really good football games. Um, being kind of the underdog in this game and having that road mentality this team has had all season, how, do, how has this team been able to thrive in those situations? Uh, I think the guys would talk about it way more than we do as coaches. I mean, that'd be a great question for those guys. Um, they know they've been doubted uh, quite a bit this year. Um, whether it was a, a, a tough loss to Tulane, who probably is a New Year's Six <laughs> team, uh, but it was a tough loss to rally and go to Oklahoma when Oklahoma was ranked in the top five, six in the country and find a big a way to win that game to – going on the road at night at, at Iowa State, and, and that's a tough place to play. I know it, especially at, at night, and find a way to win, um, to finally getting over the hump against Oklahoma State with these guys, to finally getting over the hump at a good Baylor team. Uh, our, our guys um, have really risen up, especially when people have doubted them. They've, they've risen to the top, and, and I, I can't say enough about our team leaders and about our captains because – um, they control that locker room, and, and this player-led team and player-led uh, uh, player-led team has been. Uh, uh, they've taken ownership in it. And I think that's really cool. Coach, after the game Saturday, the word culmination came up. Culmination of a four-year process, yeah. as it relates to one individual, like Echo. How much of a sense do you have of what that meant to him? Saturday and what it means for him to be in the position with this team now? Well, you know, taking a guy like Echo or any of those seniors, the fact that they went through a coaching change, um, never easy. And especially when it was a legacy like Coach Snyder, um, to learning a new way of doing things. Um, every way can, can and will be successful if you buy into the new way. And uh, credit to those guys that bought in. There's a lot of guys that uh, that didn't fit, buy in, whatever, that are no longer with our program because they chose another route. And these guys stuck with all of us. And uh, I, I'm excited because there was some trying times in 2020 for sure. I can, you guys saw it and I lived it. Uh, but for those guys to, to stay the course together and help each other through those times, that's the culmination, I'd say, is more for those older kids. I mean, we're still building our program here. We're still building it, and this is a, a good step to be where we're at. But we still have, uh, in my mind, a ways to go to sustain that. Uh, but for the guys that are in there last year, uh, what they've gone through between the coaching change to 2020 uh, pandemic to where we're at now, uh, it's, it's, that's a remarkable feat, guys. Coach, after 12 games, how would you describe this version of Kansas State, this team? One, we've become more disciplined. Um, our penalties have been down. Our turnovers have been down. We've been opportunistic uh, with our offense when we get turnovers. Um, we have stayed in the fight 
when things aren't going well to the questions we have before of, boy, we can't stop somebody early on. We stay in the fight to, you know, we're not doing real well offensively in the second half at times to staying in the fight. I think our, our guys know it's never going to be easy and they have to find a way to, to stick together, believe in each other, believe in the process, believe in the program uh, that, um, you know, if you attack each day one day at a time, get yourself prepared uh, every every day to be good on Saturday. And our kids have done a phenomenal job from the last practice on Thursday, and we talk about this every week, the last practice on Thursday to when we play that game on Saturday, whether that's uh, 48 hours to a night game to about 40 hours to an early afternoon or morning game, they attack the heck out of that last 40 hours with all the preparation, all the walkthroughs, all the meeting to make sure that they're focused and ready to play. Um, if something happens with Will on Saturday, is Adrian Martinez available? In That's what we uh, we hope, but we can't answer that probably until through the day on Wednesday. Um, you know, I don't know how many. I'm not gonna. I don't know how many reps he's gonna be able to get. Um, won't get any today. Um, we hope he can get some tomorrow. If not, Rubes and and Jaron will take those. It's gonna be a day by day process, but I know this, the kid is chomping at the bit to be available and uh, we'll see where it's at. We, we will maybe not know till Saturday, um, but it's not like, hey, we don't know who's playing. We, we know Will Howard's gonna play. And if Adrian can give it a go, if we need him in a situation, whatever that situation is, um, and can use him and it's safe to use him, we would use him. Chris, this may be similar to a couple of questions ago, but if there's one reason that you got to this game this year, what is it? Uh, the senior leadership. Period. That the what how they've handled coming off of a bowl win, um, which brings energy to the to a program. To how they handled the winter, to how they handled the spring, to how they handled the summer. They've been building up to the season and. We had high expectations in that locker room. Um, had some had some difficult times, but uh, found ways uh, to be successful at the critical moments as well to win some big time games. Um, so I, I'm excited for these guys to have this opportunity.